What's up, nerds? Welcome to another episode of the Multiverse Report. This is a very special episode where we are recapping our thoughts and feelings on the Batman from Wayne Tower to the Iceberg Lounge and everywhere in between. My name is Mike Gibson. With me as always is Steve Howler. What's up, Steve? Well, apparently a really long and really good movie from everything I'm hearing. Um, I have not yeah. seen it myself, so I think it's, this one's going to be pretty Gibson heavy. I was going to say, when I said our thoughts and feelings, <laughs> I really meant mine because you haven't seen it. Correct. Um, and uh, just so whoever's listening, so we can be clear... There's going to be some spoilers in this review. I've tried to organize my notes where the front ha front part of this is going to be mostly zero to light spoilers about the movie. Uh, and then the back end, I'm going to do get into some major spoilers, plot, uh, things like that, that I enjoyed specific specifically from the movie. Um, so if you don't want any spoilers for this movie, don't listen to anything they're about to say. If you kind of want to know my general thoughts on things and maybe some, again, light spoilers that won't ruin the movie for you, um, then listen to half of it. And when we tell you to stop, then stop listening. I will make an announcement when we're about to go into the heavy spoiler territory. I believe even Steve at that point will take his headphones off because <laughs> he doesn't want to uh, know all these things either. But until, until Mike waves at me like a crazy person, I will have my headphones off. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. The Batman opened, I guess, you know, technically Thursday night. There were some Wednesday night previews. Um, uh, Friday was the major opening. It has earned currently, last I checked, $128.5 million domestically and $248.5 worldwide, million dollars worldwide. Uh, that's a lot of money for a three-hour movie. Uh, it's the second biggest pandemic opening besides only Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, and this one is a half hour longer than Spider-Man No Way Home. So, Which is crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, it's it, like I feel like that's even that's like more impressive that it's made that much money being that long because the longer the movie is, the less showings you can like physically have in a yep. day, you know, and like that adds up over time. There's like less theaters it can be in, less times it can be shown, therefore less tickets can be sold. It still is at you know, uh, two hundred forty eight and a half million dollars worldwide right. or hundred sorry 248 hundred i actually yeah. specify that mildly crazy to think too like i i actually i was listening to um another syracuse podcast the super pod hero cast doing their review of ant-man and that movie clocks in at just around two hours and it's like you think about the differential in uh you know uh various superhero titles from yeah. that to you know another standalone superhero movie is Two hours versus three hours, like without the team up end of things. That's yeah. that's a lot of a lot of weight to carry, and I, I don't that's know. A lot. Do, you, do you think it carried it well? Let's let's start there. Um, I do think it carried it very well. Um, just a couple other stats, real quick. I want to get out of the way. It <laughs> is the currently the third biggest opening for any Batman film. Uh, it is the biggest opening of any first Batman film, like the first in a series. So bigger opening than the original batman batman begins um i don't know if they're counting probably batman versus superman i don't know um and the fifth highest opening for a dc film of all time wow so uh it's looking pretty good um for sure i saw this uh, if you heard me talk about it last week i went to see this at 9 45 in the morning on friday um i really liked this movie my wife and i went um together we both really, really liked it. Um, she thought it was phenomenal. Uh, I think that is very much its own thing. Um, it is another grounded, quote unquote, realistic take on Batman, similar to the Christopher Nolan trilogy. However, it doesn't feel like that to me. It's got its own tone, its own kind of style. It certainly looks different. It's been shot very differently, a different kind of aesthetic to the film. Um, and yes, it is very long. I can see that being a problem for some people. Uh, I didn't notice. I thought I was so immersed in the story and the film that it didn't bother me. I could tell that it was long, but it didn't feel too long. And even my wife is somebody that if we're watching a movie at home, she will pause a 90-minute movie every 15 minutes <laughs> for something. Yep. Um, 
And so, you know, she's someone that really rolled her eyes when I told her, hey, buckle up, this thing is three hours long. Um, even her said that to her, it did not feel like it was three hours long. It felt like it moved a lot quicker, uh, which is interesting because the pace is a little slower than some other Batman movies, as you could probably guess. Um, it takes three hours to get through the story. But um, for me, I, I can see that being a problem maybe on repeat viewings. I was very excited to see this movie. I was like ready for it. I was into it. I loved everything that I was seeing. Most everything that I was seeing, I should say. Uh, so the fact that it was kind of taking its time, the fact that it was that long, the pace of it was more immersive to me. It really kind of sucked me in to the movie rather than being like, okay, let's pick it up. Let's get somewhere. Cause it does a lot in those three hours. I don't, I can't think of a section that I thought really dragged or of a section that could clearly be omitted I'm, you could certainly trim some stuff there. Like the, again, the pace is deliberately uh, a little bit slower, but not in a way that drags. If that makes sense, it's kind of in a way that just lets you live in the world and kind of experience it as Batman is experiencing things. Um, you know, he because it is a detective story, and holy crap, Steve, this is a detective story, the likes of which we've never seen in a Batman movie. A lot of Batman fans have always wanted a movie that really focused on the, the, the detective mystery solving aspects of Batman, which is prevalent in the comic books. Right. And, you know, a lot of the movies are all just like punchy, punchy, punchy movies. Um, right. The, and the, he, his tagline half the time is world's greatest detective. And in the movies, it's world's greatest kickboxer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, this is a, this is a, a very, very immersive and, it's it's a detective story. You you are following Batman from one clue to the next as he's trying to solve um, these Riddler puzzles and like what Riddler is trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so the the pace really worked with that, you know, because Batman's walking around a crime scene, he's studying a clue, the audience is studying the clue at the same time. So it really like kind of took you along. That's how I found it to work very well for the movie, the pace and the the time frame of the film. Um, I'm seeing a lot of comparisons to the dark Knight because it is like a grounded take. But again, I think this is like definitely its own style, its own feel. I don't think that it, um, deals anything from the dark Knight necessarily. Um, but similarly to the dark Knight, I think that this is a movie that is a good movie, regardless of whether or not it's a Batman movie, if that makes sense. Like the Dark Knight, I've always thought, is a movie that's just a good movie. It doesn't matter that it's Batman versus right. Joker. It's just a really good movie. It's just a really well-made film. It's well-created and acted and written and directed. And that is the same for this movie. Like, this could be... I mean, there, certain things wouldn't work, but if you take Batman out of this movie and put in another detective, it would yeah. still be a cool, fun movie. It wouldn't be as exciting maybe uh to somebody like me who just loves batman but you know it's still it's a good film regardless of it being a batman movie or a superhero movie which right. I think but if is... you if you put brad pitt from seven in that role you would still have the detective story leading leading its way through things exactly exactly and i was talking to a friend of mine who said that her co-worker described it as uh stealing a lot from seven. Oh, really i don't necessarily i don't necessarily think that's the case i didn't think that when i was watching it i mean it's a uh, gritty detective crime murder mystery in a city that it rains a lot but you know other <laughs> so, than that like so it's broad, just like broad strokes that'd be like, got it, but <laughs> yeah yeah exactly broad strokes sure yep. it rips off from, from sherlock holmes or any other <laughs> right. mystery detective story you know but like just because the two movies are in the same genre doesn't mean that they're one is ripping the other off necessarily right. that's how i feel of it um to me it really felt like a it felt like a comic book in ways where this is a, this is a light spoiler ish, but not really. I don't think it's very story focused. This film nice. there, uh, it assumes that, you know, who Batman is and take, and just goes, it just starts. Good. Um, That's there's <laughs> very li Exactly. We, we didn't want an origin. There's definitely not an origin. It's, it's similar to what you and I talked about. Like there's a reference to his parents yeah. along the way they are somehow they are entwined into the plot in a little bit of a way um or that happening is entwined into the plot like their their murder yeah they re they reference it definitely not an origin story um and there's not a whole lot of like setup for like 
I mean, there is, but I guess it's done in a kind of a different way where it just feels like it starts like the store. It starts with the initial, like the uh, catalyst of the story. Yeah. You witness it and then you just, it, you just go. And it just follows this story the whole time. You're just with Batman going from clue to clue to clue to clue to clue to figure it out what happens. Um, so there's no real, there's, and there, there's no exposition. Like at no point does he say to Catwoman like, or Gordon or anybody like, I do this because I made a vow or anything right. like that, you know, that we've seen in every Batman movie ever. He's just, he's just doing it. And yeah. you, know, you can infer that either from what you do find out in the movie or that you've seen one other Batman movie. Right. You kind of get it, right? So it's like kind of unnecessary. And I've seen people kind of brush up against that in their criticisms as well. And it's like, you don't really need that. Like, you don't need James Bond to reintroduce himself every time. Right. You get it, you know, it doesn't and matter. And much um, like Batman, he's different people every time too, so what the heck. Yeah, sure. You still um, know who he's going to be. Uh, my yeah. question, how's Pattinson's Batman voice? Um. Okay, perfect. I was literally just getting into uh, actors and what I thought. Oh, there you go. See, I'm just here to segue for you, buddy. Perfect. No, again, light, light spoiler. Uh, there is no big effect on his voice, a la Christian Bale or Ben Affleck, whether it's uh, like Christian Bale supposedly is actually making that incredibly dark, gritty, uh, distorted voice, or in the Ben Affleck Snyder movies when it's deliberately made, he's like deliberately distorting his voice mechanically or, you right. know, with the technology or something or to, yep. to disguise his voice. Um, he's just... It's it's more like Michael Keaton does it, and he's just talking. He's just talking like this. He's just talking with a whisper, rasp kind of thing, which works so yeah. well for me. Um, it just seems more natural. It it doesn't uh, take you out of the film. Like I watched Dark Knight this week, and I think you and I talked about it recently. How they really dial up the voice in Dark Knight uh, from Batman Begins, but especially there's a, the scene at the end when Joker's hanging upside down and he's talking. That is just like. Mm -hmm too just distractingly distorted for me right. like all Wait, you proved about? is that a city is gonna stand up to a man like like whoa man <laughs> take it down like it's a little too much for me they, they can't be good um, for your vocal cords just chill dude yeah <laughs> i know yeah chill out batman um Batson in general i think is great he is great in this role he's definitely like his own Every, everything in this movie is unique to the Batman mythos, I believe, in so, as far as film is concerned. Hmm. I think Patman, Pat, Patman? Pattinson, uh, I've heard Pattinson. I haven't heard anyone say Patman. So All let's right. copyright that one. Yeah. Trademark, multiverse report, Patman. <laughs> um, he's so good. He's very intimidating when he needs to be. There are times, he does so much with his eyes. He does more with his eyes, I think, than any other Batman actor ever. Um, there's a lot of close-ups of him where he's like examining a crime scene or listening for something or just interacting with a character where there's just so much portrayed through his eye movements. Yep. Um, it's one, it's wonderful. Yeah. He's so good. Um, like you can tell, like when he's being intimidating, like with a criminal, like a street thug or something, his eye, like he's, uh, you know, like I'm going to beat the hell from you <laughs> kind of. Uh, intensity from his eyes. I mean, there's uh, times later on where he's more unsure of himself. This Again, this is, they, they make it clear in the movie, he's new at this. He's been doing this for two years. Right. And so um, uh, he's like, he's a Batman that is fully formed. Like he is Batman, but he's unrefined still, if that makes sense. Like he's still getting good at what he's doing. He's making mistakes. We see him make mistakes in the film, some very prominently. Yeah. Um, and so there are times when he's being challenged by whether it be Riddler or Selena or Gordon or a police officer or something like that, where you can tell in his eyes, he's like, I'm not entirely sure what I should be doing right now, you know, or like, is this too far? What am I doing? You know, um, he tells a really great story through his character and his eyes. And uh, it's great. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when I get to the spoilers. Um, Zoe Kravitz, wonderful as Selena Kyle Catwoman. She's a very... Uh, it's a great role. She's a very layered character. They give her kind of a lot to do, a lot of emotions to play with. Um, it's very much of the comics, uh, specifically year one, uh, the way Catwoman is portrayed in year one. Um, 
uh and even how she looks towards the end there's a scene towards the end when she's in the exact same kind of like um uh costume or outfit with the short hair and like the black kind of uh halter top thing like straight out of the comic books um uh she's wonderful paul dano is the riddler super creepy uh i wanted i simultaneously wanted more of him but also understand the way that they held back made it scarier um and in the reviews or descriptions we've heard of this movie as it being called almost a horror movie it is almost a horror movie because of paul dano's riddler that's all i'm gonna say okay um Je- jeffrey wright as commissioner gordon incredible i loved him he's not oh, sorry he's not commissioner yet it's you know again it's like a these characters are there but they're not all at their peak yet right. even somebody like riddler or selena kyle like they're not like peak riddler or peak catwoman like you can tell there's more like refining to go on these characters and hopefully down the line if they come back we'll see more fully formed versions of them it's like this movie's like it's not an origin story but it kind of is at the same time it's just like we're seeing the early incarnations of these and you really get a feeling that they are going to develop and uh that is true for batman there is an arc for batman in this movie that i didn't really expect but it definitely trends towards and gives you an idea of what we might see if there is a sequel and i'm assuming that there is going to be a sequel right um uh, but yeah, it's cool to see uh, Gordon. I, I don't know what his title, if it's Sergeant or Lieutenant Captain Gordon. I'm not sure what it actually is, but um, he's really like getting his, getting his hands dirty with Batman um, a lot and like really see, on the ground of, investigating where they, with where Batman. They forge the, where they forge the Bond type thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. and talking about Bond, he's very like casual with Batman. This is like a minor, very minor spoiler. Yeah. He calls him man a lot, like, colloquially like you gotta get out of here man <laughs> like a lot like that i just thought it was it was like funny but also like true yep. to his version of the character and uh shows their kind of relationship in a way that i haven't really seen before and i mm-hmm. really really like like they are really working together they they trust each other more so than i almost in any other incarnation of the two characters i think it's great dude uh, you gotta Colin- get out of here <laughs> yeah uh colin farrell was great as the penguin i loved how they used the penguin he wasn't the focus he wasn't the main villain but he was there um he definitely served a purpose in the movie i thought he was great i had to lean over to my wife and remind her that it was colin farrell because that makeup is incredible stellar um he barely looks like him um i mean it's true to all the photos that we've seen it remains that impressive throughout the movie made me very excited for the uh hbo max show that we've been told is coming about the penguin very excited to see that uh best in the cast best in the cast john turturro as carmine falcone hands down flooring performance and i gotta say i loved that they called him carmine falcone and not carmel falcone like they did in the nolan movies because i always read it as falcone there's no i at the end of that name i read it as Mm -hmm. falcone it was weird to me that i had to start saying falcone when the christopher nolan movies were coming out now i don't have to do anymore Falco. he was just tremendous just nice. tremendous in that role and i almost forgot that he was in it because you go in knowing it's a riddler it's catwoman it's uh you know all the other people i mean i'm not He's gonna, great i'm not gonna lie i completely forgot until you just said that like i know we've yeah. talked about it on the cast or the, the pod before but like I had no idea yeah exactly um if you if anyone out there is listening and you're looking for reading material that will either prep you for seeing this movie or uh you want more of this kind of style I got to recommend Batman Year One, Batman The Long Halloween, and Batman, then the sequel to Long Halloween, Batman Dark Victory. Uh, they took from those three books and others too, e- like uh, Batman Ego um, is another one that was kind of referenced, but those three are clearly the main source material, I think, uh, for this movie. Like, um, minor spoiler the events kick off on Halloween night, clearly a reference to Long Halloween, and other things that happen within the movie happen in the events of those three books. And Long Halloween is a unofficial sequel to Year One, so it really kind of all works together. So I would recommend those three. Um, before we get into spoilers, I guess I just want to say, like I said, it's very story focused, it's very Batman focused. I saw somebody online criticizing the movie, saying that it's a, movie, a Batman movie that's not about Batman. I cannot disagree with that more this is the most batman we've probably ever gotten in a movie not just that it's three hours like 
I mean, I'll say more. I don't know if it's too much of a spoiler, so I'll say it in a second here. <laughs> um, gen- my general closing thoughts, is this is a world that I want more of. Um, I want to see other Batman characters alive in this universe, allies, villains, whatever. Like, I really like the feel and the noir take of uh, this uh, on the Batman character. I loved the way Gotham was shot and the way the Gotham felt like another city. It wasn't just like Chicago, like it is mm-hmm. in the Dark Knight or the Nolan movies or whatever. It felt like its own thing for the first time in a while. Um, and I really liked it. I, I'm dying to see it again. It comes on HBO Max on April 18th. So if you're avoiding theaters still or you're not comfortable going, you don't have that long to wait. So mid-April, nice. um, you can see it on HBO Max. So as of now, I am going to jump into spoiler territory. So wait, Steve, has you have a question? Yeah, prior to that, if anyone's jumping off before spoiler territory, feel free to like, subscribe, uh, you know, leave us reviews. Um, we want to hear more from you. Uh, multiverse support at gmail.com, the multiverse support.com, multiverse support on all the socials. Check us out. Um, and uh, now on to Mike's spoiler review. All right. So here comes spoilers. Steve, I, yeah, headphones are going off. Okay. Um, so much I loved about this movie. The beginning, where there was just kind of like a sequence of criminals that are, they know about the Batman. Like they make it clear that. Batman has been working in Gotham for a while. It's not, he's not brand new, like they say, two years. And that's enough for criminals to be scared of him. So I loved all the staring into a dark alleyway, half expecting him to walk out or staring around, looking around a corner and half expecting him to be there. He's already made this mark. So cool. So such a great way to like, make him a make him like a a living legend already in the city like people know that he's out there and they are scared of him um i really like the grounded aspect of it and grounded in a way um that was different from the nolan version of grounding it like he he's walking around gotham city streets in a hoodie and a backpack and a hat with his costume on under his jacket with like his cowl and the cape in the backpack or whatever like spider-man style he can run down a dark alley and change real quick and be batman like we've never seen that i don't i don't think i've ever seen that in a comic book let alone a movie but how much sense does that make that he would just want access to his stuff immediately when he sees a mugging he can just take care of it um and even like i don't know if there's there. I don't know if there is a Wayne Manor in this version of Batman because he lives in Wayne Tower in the city. And I got to say, I miss Wayne Manor and I miss a regular Batcave, but how much, like, thinking of it logically, of course he wouldn't want to live 10 miles outside of the city limits to be Batman. He'd want to live right there where he can access everything or access the city um, quicker. I love seeing him work directly with the Gotham City uh, police force, like on uh, crime scenes looking through evidence and some cops don't want him there. Some cops are okay with it. You know, I really liked that. It was such a cool uh, thing that we don't see that much in the comic books, a little bit in the dark night, but uh, very rarely have we seen it in the films. I loved it. Um, The biggest criticism that I'm seeing about this movie is that Robert Pattinson is a bad Bruce Wayne. I don't understand that. I don't think he was a bad Bruce Wayne. I think this is a different Bruce Wayne than you are used to seeing. If that's something that you thought, I think that this is not, necessarily billionaire playboy i'm aloof uh to distract people from my real self bruce wayne i don't maybe he'll develop that persona but i don't think he's gotten there yet i think this is i'm still uh emotionally stunted uh by my life or whatever has happened to me i have been uh caged up in this i'm so i'm so obsessed with the what i'm doing with batman that i cannot be billionaire playboy bruce wayne Maybe he'll some. Maybe he'll get there. Maybe you know they made a big deal about him emerging in this movie. So maybe in the second movie we'll see more of that. But this is a very different Bruce Wayne. And I really liked it. Matt Reeves himself said he based it on a uh, reclusive, like Kurt Cobain style figure, and I think that was great. So I thought he was great as Bruce Wayne. But saying that, this is clear. This is maybe the only Batman movie where he is Batman way more than he is Bruce Wayne. We see very little of Bruce Wayne in this movie. It's almost like playing an Arkham. A video game where you're just Batman the whole time and you are with Batman the whole time. That's something that I loved about it. And when I said earlier that I wanted more Riddler, uh, it's because we don't get the classic superhero movie thing where we're with Batman for a little bit. And then we jump over here to say 
to see what the villain is doing. Like, oh, now we're going to go to Riddler and Riddler's going to talk about what his plot is and why he's doing the things that he's doing. And we don't get that. You're with Batman the whole time. You don't know anything that Batman doesn't know, which makes the mystery work so much more for me because you are so invested in finding out what the answers are as Batman is finding them out. You are trying to solve the mystery as the audience at the same time as Batman is. And I think that was so cool. Again, yes, it did make me wish there was a little bit more Riddler, but the scene that we got with the two of them at the end in Arkham, so cool. Um, Love that so much. Um, I got to say that I love the flight suit uh, when he's escaping the Gotham City Police Department and he runs up to the top of the building and he stops because he's scared. It's like you can tell this is the first time he's ever jumped off a building and he's about to do it because he has to. You've never seen that before. It's so cool. He pulls the cord, his flight suit uh, inflates, and then his disastrous landing is just like, oh, this is so cool of like a again it's a year two he's not good at it yet he's not refined he's making mistakes his parachute comes out catches on a bridge and he flies down straight into the road and rolls and limps away like he's making mistakes he's trying to figure out how to be peak batman and he's not there yet and i just love seeing that uh development um okay biggest spoiler so far i think i'm going long on this so i'm gonna try to wrap this up but okay big spoiler if you're if you're listening, if you really, if you're just going along, if you're lazy and you don't want to change it, this is a big spoiler, all right? It's a big one, all right? This is the last time. Three, two, one. Mm. Joker. The Joker is in this movie. Um, uh, apparently, this got leaked like a week before. I didn't see it, and I'm glad I didn't see it. Uh, there's a scene towards the end of the movie where Riddler is incarcerated in an Arkham Asylum. Who's next to him in the cell? Oh, someone with a giant grinning grin who's laughing maniacally in... Um, saying some weird uh, stuff to Riddler, becoming friends with him. Uh, this was uh, Barry Koenig Kroger. I can't, I don't remember the last name. I'm, I'm losing it now. Um, he was in Eternals. What's the dude's name? Where's the cast listing? Where is that cast listing? Uh, Barry Kogan. Barry Kogan um, plays uh, the Joker. And... Um, Apparently, there was another scene that was deleted from this uh, earlier in the movie where Batman goes to Arkham to question the Joker about what the Riddler is doing. And if there's like kind of like a Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter kind of style. Um, and that was made to show the audience that these two characters already have a history. These two characters already know each other. This is like a living, breathing Gotham. And that's still what Matt Reeves was trying to do by having it at the end. He ended up cutting the scene. He's going to, he said it's going to be on whatever Blu ray release or whatever comes out. So we will get to see it, but he cut it because of the pace of the movie. Was it was just taking away from the drive of the story, which makes total sense. Still included it at the end, um, again to signify that this is like a breathing world, a world that already exists. These characters are already here. Not everything is an origin. But he also specified that this is not necessarily a signal that Joker is going to be the main villain in the second one, or if he's even going to be in it at all. It may just be an Easter egg kind of thing for this movie. Again, showing that the world is alive and uh breathing which i liked i was very excited about it personally i'm a little jokered out i'd be fine going another movie without the joker as the main villain i've seen a lot of the joker lately in movies and in comic books give me somebody else give me a mr freeze or give me a black mask or somebody anybody else um obviously i would love it if we find out more about this joker but you know i'm just saying um so anyway the ending i thought was very unique because riddler's already in jail and so the end is Batman fighting his henchmen, basically, more or less, and not fighting Riddler because Riddler's already been taken out. So at first I was like, ah, shouldn't this be the Riddler? And I was like, no, it shouldn't be because this is scarier. These are maniacal people radicalized and inspired by Riddler that are carrying out his orders with guns in a crowded place. Like, that's terrifying, and that happens in real life. So... I thought it was great after the fact, after I thought about it for a second, and I can't wait to see it again so I can really appreciate that moment even more. And I thought it was a way to uh, kind of upset the status quo of superhero films, something, a way to do it in a way that hasn't been done before, where the final battle isn't between the main bad guy and the hero. Um, it's just like another, it shows the influence of bad people and how a uh, terrible effect that can have on uh, people. I don't know, loved it. Um, last thing I'll say is I love the evolution of Batman and, uh, in this movie, uh, people, 
I don't understand people that are saying that there's no character uh, development or character arc for Batman. There clearly is. He's somebody that is focused on vengeance at the beginning. They keep calling him vengeance for three hours. And then at the end, he realizes that he can be a symbol of hope and inspiration for people. He's saving people, guiding people away from danger. He's at the, I got emotional at the end when he's setting that woman on the lift for the helicopter and she grabs his arm like she's scared to let go. She trusts him more than she trusts the people that uh, are taking her away. And that like, uh, like the look on his face as he looked down and realized who he had become, the fact that he is uh, just, he's not hiding from the people of Gotham anymore. He is right there helping them because he knows that's where he needs to be. So it's not like he's this far away symbol that's, you know, hides behind, hides in the shadows or hides, uh, you know, behind on, on rooftops or anything anymore. He's not that anymore, which he says in the beginning of the movie, I am the shadows, which was badass. But at the end, he's not that anymore. Or he's learning his, he's developing a public persona and a pu public acceptance of the people of Gotham City, which I really like that idea where he's going to be this public hero, maybe, or a known hero, not just a rumor. Like the rumor stuff is cool, but we've seen that so many times. I think I'm excited for a uh, kind of a different view here. So anyway, that, those are my thoughts. I really like this movie. I'm dying to see it again. I don't know if I'll be able to see it in the theater again, but I'll definitely watch it a million times on HBO Max uh, next month when it's out. Um, Again, we've talked on this show about uh, the sequel being underway already, or talks for the sequel being underway already. Um, Matt Reeves started writing this movie in March of 2017. That was five years ago. I hope to God it does not take that long again for a sequel to come out. I hope we get news on that real soon. Um, I love this movie, and uh, I've been talking for too long, so we're going to do a, a regular episode of the Multiverse Report right now. So if you're watching live, stay tuned. And uh, I'm going to signal Steve to come back so he can help wrap me up here. Hello. All right. Hello. Sorry, that was kind of long, but I'm ready to be done. And we can just end this episode and then record our regular one. All right. Well, in that case, I guess thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you like the Batman, let us know what you thought of it by contacting us at one of the other things that we talk about all the time, social media, emails, all that stuff, website. Um, the and if you didn't like it, it's tell us. Tell show. us why I'm wrong. Yeah. Who knows? There we All go. Right. There we go. Uh, until next time, which will be a few seconds from now, we'll see you in the multiverse.